It's day 24 and we're going to put those subroutines to better use by passing them some information using parameters and making them do different things based on different input. So far you might have been a bit underwhelmed with subroutines. They're just bits of code that are like recipes. But when I talked to you about those, I did say that recipes can have ingredients. And if you change the ingredients of a recipe, you get a different kind of cake, which I'm all for. But we haven't yet achieved that same thing with our subroutine. So how do we do it? When we're defining our subroutine, the brackets are for the arguments. These are the pieces of information we're going to pass to it. The piece of information can be variable names that are made up for the first time here. So in this subroutine, which cake, I'm going to have an option for ingredient. That goes inside the bracket, which is what the subroutine will now expect to be typed in. Within the code, I'm very quickly going to have this. We built a reasonably simple subroutine here, which takes in the name of an ingredient and expresses its opinion quite strongly on the ingredient that was typed in. How do I get this to work? Well, we call it in exactly the same way, but instead of leaving the brackets blank, we can send it a message. So I'm going to send it the string that says chocolate. And if I run that, the variable ingredient inside the subroutine gets set to the value chocolate. And as you can see, it runs and says chocolate cake is amazing. If I change that to broccoli and run it again, it's now thinking that I want a broccoli cake. Anything else then comes up different. I can put all of those into my code if I want, running with different arguments. But I don't just need to have one single argument. I can have as many arguments as I want. In fact, all I need to do within the brackets of the definition is add a comma in and create more variables. This is now expecting three arguments, an ingredient, a base, and a coating. Call it, just like in some of the functions we've already used, I need to put my commas in and do these options. So now when I run it, I get this, a full sentence coming up, built from those component parts. I could even, if I wanted to, ask the user to put those things in for me. I could say, now when I run it, the program will prompt me for these things and it'll send it to the subroutine. Those values will be set to the variable names set in the parameters and then used to evaluate the code within the subroutine. Perfect. We've now got a way of sending information into a subroutine that makes it do different things. What are the common problems with adding parameters to a subroutine then? Well, here's one, and let's run it and see what it doesn't like. Well, invalid syntax again, but why? We've got two options in the subroutine, but nothing's being called. And hopefully, if you pause it, you'll spot the problem. Yes, that's right, the problem was a lack of a comma. You need a comma between each variable that you're expecting to be supplied as a parameter. And remember, you can have as many of these as you want as long as they're separated by commas and inside of those brackets. It's also worth remembering that if your program asks for two parameters, then whenever you call that subroutine, you must give it two parameters. You can't give it less or more. It must accept two. As always, I've got some broken code that I'd love you to go through and fix. Debug it for me, pretty please. Your challenge today is going to be to create subroutines that will roll a dice of any number of sides. This should support sides from one to as big a number as you can think of. I would like one subroutine written with one parameter that allows us to call a function 
such as roll dice with a number that gives us the maximum amount of sides I want from that dice. If you're wondering why, well, we'll be using the code for that in the next two sessions to build something quite cool. Once you've built your program for rolling dice of different sizes, share it with us in the community by publishing it and use the hashtag replit 100 days of code to share it amongst all your followers and admirers to see exactly where you're getting to with your subroutines. Now tomorrow, we're gonna to look at sending some data back to the original code. This is called a return and will allow us to send information back that can be used by other code.